Hello, I'm Ashwina Agarwal and I'm going to be walking you through the basics of the unit circle. And keep in mind that this is just an introduction and it is directed to anyone um, toward the end of their Algebra 2 curriculum or anyone that needs help with the unit circle. So here's the table of contents. We are going to be discussing these things in this order. First, what is the unit circle? Why do we need to memorize it? Repeating patterns that the unit circle has and some tricks and shortcuts you can use to memorize the unit circle. So first up, what is the unit circle? So the unit circle is basically a circle with the radius of one and any line that you draw from the center of the unit circle to any other point on the perimeter will have the radius of one. And the unit circle can basically be used to solve um, trigonometric functions, expressions, and triangle relationships and more. Why do we need to memorize the unit circle? So at first, in your lower level classes, you're going to be given the unit circle and you will have an advantage. But as you go into your higher level classes, you won't you will be expected to know the unit circle and have it memorized. So it's easier if you start now. So repeating patterns and first we're going to cover degrees. So as you can see, I like to call these mean degrees. So this is zero and this is also known as 360. But for now, we're going to focus on quadrant one. So this is zero and this is 90. And if you notice that 30 to zero increases by 30 degrees. Same applies to the 90. You're going to either add or subtract 30 to get to your next degree pattern. When you look at the, look in the middle, you see 45 and you can notice that you need to add or subtract 15 degrees to get to either 60 or 30. And this applies throughout your unit circle. This is only quadrant one. But if you were to find this other angle, you would need to subtract 30, which is 60. But to find the next one, you would need to add 30, which is 120. And then from there, you would add 15, which is 135, and so on. Next, we're going to cover radians. And the way I like to think about it is radians is just another way of writing degrees. So if you know that this is 30 degrees, you can simply convert from 30 degrees to radians, or you can memorize it. But since you are starting off, I would consider converting. And this follows the same pattern. 0 degrees, pi over 6 is another way to say 30 degrees, pi over 4 is another way to say 15 degrees, pi over 3 is another way to say 60 degrees, and pi over 2 is 90. And this applies throughout your unit circle. Next, we're going to cover coordinates. So as you know, this is 1, 0, and this makes sense because um, your x-axis, remember we talked about how the radius of any other point on the perimeter will always be 1. So if you go right one point, that's changing your x-axis value, but your y-axis is still 0. So that's why this is 1, 0. And if you come here, this is also another point on the perimeter. But instead of changing the x-axis, you're changing the y-axis since you're going up. But your x-axis point will still be 0. And here are some points you need to memorize. And there is a pattern with these. So first, you're going to start with root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And if you notice, your top numerator point on the x-axis will always be 3, 2, 1. And when you go to your second quadrant, it's going to be 1, 2, 3. And it's going to repeat. Your bottom denominator for any point will always be 2. And your y-axis will always go in the opposite order as your x-axis. So it'll be 1, 2, 3. 3, 2, 1. And this repeats throughout your unit circle. And now we're going to see it all together. So this is your complete quadrant 1 of your unit circle. And as you can see, you have the degrees, the radians, and the coordinates all in one picture. But you're really only talking about one point. This, blue, this first blue point is 30 degrees but it can also be written as pi over 6, and it can also be written in the co coordinate format. Same applies to the red point and the blue point and the black point. And once you really memorize this first quadrant, you can apply the tricks and patterns we talked about to find the second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant.